Okay, this is another video from Jack Guy showing the Wanhal Duplicator i3 mods that I've done to date so far. So uh, one of the biggest things that we did is uh, changed out the x-axis uh, bearing blocks to the longer 45 millimeter element you use that stick out. Um, of course, we replaced the 24 volt extruder cooling fan with a 12 volt model. I'm still using the same stock 30 millimeter. Uh, uh, print cooling fan but I have angled the bracket basically all I did was unhook the screw on this side loosen both and angle the bracket to be able to blow more directly uh, where the nozzle is actually printing so that's kind of a big deal for cooling one of the other big things that I think really should be looked at as a potential change from the factory is rotating the motor so that the plug comes out the back now Honestly, this may, uh, well actually this will clear with the uh, stock bearing setup, but the idea is that um, the plug's out of the way because what happens is when you raise the Z-axis all the way up, I was finding that, you know, absolutely maxed out that the, uh, the cable would actually hit and kind of cut into the wires here on the lip of the upper edge. And rather than have them change the frame design, uh, it's, it's a relatively simple fix to swap the motor and turn it sideways. And on mine, at least so far, the, cable, the cabling was long enough that you just reach around the back here. And hopefully you can kind of see it. Sorry, it's kind of hard to get to here. And you can see it clearly clears. Now, originally the uh, back bearing would only have a single bearing here in the lower anyway. And even though I put a longer bearing in, uh, everything still clears. One of the other changes I found was uh, they originally shipped with rather short, these are just M4 cap screws, uh, for the belts. And what I found is there's a slight misalignment of the belts. Basically where they attach, it was being pulled closer to the front of the carriage. And that was causing it to ride on the uh, uh, shoulder of the pulley inside the motor. And then also uh, back at the idler end. So uh, I just switched out. These are just uh, 20 millimeter long M4s. Uh, you know, just simply unscrewed it, uh, slipped the belt off, put the new one in, screwed it in. Uh, also, I put a zip tie between the two to pull them together, basically, to counteract the belt tension. Not that it's really needed, but just little things like this can make a minor difference in ringing and and those kind of things. It's just a good idea since we're, we got a little extra bolt length and it sticks out the back. It doesn't really matter. It's not going to interfere with anything, but it gives us that little bit of extra edge. Um, so now basically this allows uh, what I was talking about before is for for the, the gantry to be squared up when you first fire this thing up, you would just let it raise all the way to the top. And you would just turn each lead screw until it hits the top. But before, again, you can see the clearance here. Now, with the with the cable facing the back, I don't have that issue where it'll cut into the top edge. Um, so it makes it a lot cleaner. One of the other things that we did is when I changed the fan out, um, and it's kind of hard to see here, is basically the two fan wires, uh, what they do is they just solder the, the wires of the fan. They heat shrink it real nice. It's all connected. But it makes it hard to change out the fan later because, again, fans do fail. So one of the things I'm going to ask Juan how to do is actually change. These are just screw terminal blocks. These are standard things you see on motherboards and all that stuff. Uh, these are just uh, point, what is it, 5.08 uh, millimeter spacing. Just some cheap screw terminals I had off of Amazon. Of course, I heat shrink the wires to the terminals, made it nice. So one pair is for the extruder cooling fan, and we've switched that to constant on. And then the other one is to the front cooling fan. But the idea is here, I kind of held it back with a zip tie just to keep it nice and neat, and I maybe could have flipped it the other way. But this allows you a quick change out to just wire in a new fan. So if you want to try a new fan bracket, you know, as part of the overall mods, you know, if you want to change this cooling fan to a blower, or if you want to try multiple fans, because the board certainly can power it, going to a screw terminal here uh, makes a lot of sense, and it actually works in the head. It's not, you know, out of the way. It's not obtrusive. So I'm kind of hoping the factory can support that mod. That would be really nice all the way around. So, uh, and further improvements, what I did is, because the... Uh, the y-axis here is just an L bracket normally held. I just used a big zip tie to kind of tension it down. 
I know that James Armstrong, my buddy, is looking at uh, trying to make some printable blocks or replace the whole this whole idler assembly with a printable version that maybe you could do belt tension on. Uh, so one of the other things that we do, you know, I just went ahead and did is is put the long bearings into my base of the Y, and and this you know on the original ones basically I used outer C rings to hold them in with a, a rubber O ring on either side of them uh, because I literally ran out of uh, uh, C C rings and O rings. Uh, of the right sizes that I kind of needed. I said, let me try super glue. So basically what it is, I've just put a dab of super glue on the on the bearing and then slid it into the aluminum and basically locked it in. One of the reasons uh, here is this back bearing, if you put the longer bearing in, the original stock bearing was basically kind of not even flush with the end because the limit switch here hits the block. So you can't have any stick out because you actually hit the mounting piece for the actual Y switch. So when I did this, I had to ensure that I put the bearing flush with the edge. It sticks out long this way, which is fine. I mean, we're using longer bearings than stock. This is all an upgrade anyway. And that way I can keep retain the original uh, Y axis uh, uh, limit switch location. So really no other changes. Um, I did do minor belt alignment. So I kind of try, oops, sorry about that. Tried to make sure that everything's lined up. Um, just nice and neat. Really makes a big difference in the uh, in the overall machine. One of the other things I did, and see if I can demonstrate here, is on the uh, basically on the build plate. What they do stock on the build plate is the sequence is simply the screw sticks down through the aluminum heater plate and through that top washer and through the spring, and through that lower washer, and then through the plate. And so what can happen is that really the only thing keeping the bed, the, the comparison is your bed, and this is the actual Y stage providing the force to move back and forth, so the whole thing could rock. So what I do is I just simply take and put an M3 nut, so I go M3 nut, that wide washer, and then the bolt and I tighten this assembly and that way that the screw now becomes a post and it's solidly fixed to the aluminum and that way when the force pushes on the screw it solidly drives the entire bed and you can't get any bed shake between the bed and the sub Z or uh, sub uh, Y plate so that really uh, also should reduce ringing and this is something uh, they could very easily fix at the factory. Now what you'll find is when you first make this mod, uh, you know, the, the holes that are in the lower aluminum plate may not perfectly align with your screw position. So what happens is you can push it in there but it kind of binds. So what you want to do is, is before you actually finally put the nut on, just squeeze the bed a couple times and what will happen is the threads are so strong and hard enough on the bolt, and this is just aluminum plate, it'll lightly shave the hole into perfect alignment. So that way when you actually use the screw, you won't get notchiness. It'll actually be able to adjust up and down as required, just as you adjust the, the nut on the bottom side. But this really should make a big difference in rigidity of the, uh, of the bed surface and kind of re hopefully remove that Y. So again, between kind of bracing up the idler here um, and again we're looking at printable solutions for this but maybe the factory can come up with something I know nobody likes zip ties on a brand new printer but really again if you're looking to get the best performance right now and you open the box putting a zip tie on really can make a difference if it's done in the right places um, the other thing I did and I, sorry I forgot to mention it was they have the little spring tensioners they normally put in the middle of the belt. And so what I've done is uh, I actually cut the zip ties on one side and then I went ahead and tensioned the belt. You just re-tension it, put new zip ties on with no spring tensioners. So my belt is like super twangy tight, but now I don't have that spring give, that spring would give in the belt. And that's actually where some of the vibration in uh, Y-axis here might come from. So the idea is the same thing. I did the exact same thing on X. In fact, what I found is after I properly tensioned everything, 
that on the x-axis I didn't even need to change the position of the belt it was already so tight uh, that it's it's fine as is without uh, changing anything and I don't need that little spring on there because honestly if anything the spring adds give to the belt the whole idea of the belt is it's got uh, fiberglass or Kevlar reinforced fibers in it and it simply doesn't stretch that's the whole point you run these belts once they're tensioned they don't stretch and when you add a spring you're adding stretch to it which results in vibration um, so pretty much this is where I'm at with the mechanical mods uh, I've got a few more things that I'll cover but uh, thanks guys for watching